right, next up is creating the blog. And to do so, we're going to use a very popular module called Nux Content. Nux Content is really great. It's not just for blogs, but really any type of content that you want to create. Content made easy for view developers. It says here Nux Content reads the content directory in your project and it parses things like Markdown, YAML files, CSV files, and JSON files to create a powerful data layer for your application. This is the data layer that you can then go ahead and query. So it's built for Nux3, again, file-based. It gives you this really nice query builder. If you've ever used MongoDB, uh, kind of like key value pairs, uh, being able to fetch that data, it's really nice. The ability to use Markdown component syntax, which we talked about at the beginning of this series, uh, for developers, if you're writing a blog post about some code, there's some really great code highlighting, syntax highlighting out of the box. You can use Nux Context to support both static and node server hosting. Um, this just means that um, in a usually in content-driven applications, so for instance a blog, once I write a blog post, it normally doesn't change. So what I can do is end up deploying that project as a static website get all the benefits of just a fast, responsive uh, blog instead of it having to fetch data every single time because, again, it's really not going to change. So this is really great. You have some options when it comes to it. So that's Nux content. I would suggest going ahead and taking a look at the documentation. We're going to jump right into the getting started. If you were creating a fresh project, you could do this. It actually gives you some nice, like, uh, built built out of the box templates um, and you'll have to do this. Now we are adding it to an existing project. So what we want to do is say npm install dash d slash uh, at nuxt slash content. So let's do that now. Let's say npm install dash d at nuxt slash content. And then we'll go ahead and add um, nux content to our modules. So we'll go into our nux config. We will say uh, at nuxt content. And then we're going to add just a little block here that defines content and says, hey, this is, um, you know, I think we need to just restart this. There we go. And this is the API configuration. So there, there are some things that we can go ahead and set in there, which we will. Um, but for right now, we're just kind of declaring that as an empty object. So with it uh, installed, what do we do? So what we want to start with is placing your markdown inside of files in the content directory on the root of your project. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and create a new folder, and we'll call this content. And inside of here, I'm just going to create a new file called hello world.md, which stands for Markdown. If you need a Markdown, Markdown works uh, by using this specific syntax to declare headers and paragraphs and images. Uh, so declare a heading one. I'm going to use one uh, hash symbol here and say hello world. And now with that saved, uh, that is really all my document needs. So I have a hello world document. So now how can I view that hello world document? So if I go back to localhost and I go to slash hello world, there is nothing displayed yet. And that is because we need a way to kind of catch that. How are we displaying that? So let's go back to... Um, our um, documentation here and it says to render the page we need to do something we need first a catch-all route using the content doc component so the catch-all route if you go into the documentation is a way to say hey this is we're going to catch any route that looks like this and then we're going to go ahead and use this template so right now nux has no way of knowing that uh, we need a, a template to kind of catch this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a catch-all route under blog. So let's create a new folder and say blog. And now that is where my content is going to be. And under pages, I'm going to create a new folder called blog. And I'm going to create this catch-all route that looks like the brackets dot 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 slug. Dot view. So slug is what the dynamic parameter 
of this route is going to be. So now the docs say, hey, uh, with that in place, we can do this. Um, we can go back to here and we can just say uh, content doc. So I also want to go back here and grab this and uh, just display whatever this is. So let's go here and say, route.params.slug. All right, so with this in place, we should be able to go to slash blog slash hello world, and there we go. So this is the route that is being displayed. This is the uh, content. So if we go back to the content and we want to add some more content, maybe we want to add a paragraph. Uh, this is my first blog post. Um, how about a heading two? Um, there we go. There's some more content. If I go here, you can see there's our content. So, so far so good. Now, one thing I noticed here is we still have this blog navigation item that's not being highlighted because we didn't fix that earlier. So if we go back to our site header um, here in our route, we are just simply, we had a static object here with a name called index. Now that we're using the pages directory and view router is involved, we can use this little helper here called use route. Now, where did you find that, Dan? How do I understand like what these helpers are? So if we go into uh, the get it started diet guide, um, and actually I want to go into the guide itself, and there's the directory structure. Uh, we'll go into the API, and you can see here's all the composables. So these things you can look through and see if these are going to help you out um, with it, whatever problem you're facing. So use route composable returns the current route and must be called in a setup function, plugin, or route middleware. So what do you have access to? Um, here are all the things that you can get access to, the full path, the hash, matched, meta, name, path, redirected form, etc. So that is how that is working. Now with that route, I can say route.name equals or includes blog, and now when I'm on my blog page, this should be selected, which it is. So great. Um, there is no blog page yet. Um, that's okay. We will figure that out in a second. All right, so something I want to point out too, that because we are using the content doc component here, we also get some things out of the box. You'll see we have this title in the tab browser there. So if we go to view page source and we look at the title, we see that we have a title and we see that we have a description. And so what content doc is doing is looking at the first header and using that as the title in the first paragraph and using that as the description. So that's a nice little bonus of using content doc. Now what I want to do is address these styles, but to do so, we're going to add some more content. And I'm actually going to get rid of this. I was just using that to display uh, what was uh, coming out of that route um, that, that we wanted to use. So what I want to show you is we'll create a little bit more content in our Hello World doc. So um, let's just say um, I'm going to grab everything from here. And we'll come back here and we'll do this. Now I do have an image here, so I'm gonna copy some images over. These are some images I just pulled from Unsplash. Now when we're using content, it is going to be looking for images in the public folder. So I'm gonna create a new folder in public. Uh, you could see uh, called images slash blog. And inside of there, I'm going to create my three uh, files that I pulled from Unsplash. And now we can reference that. So I have a header, some paragraphs. This is how you declare an image, uh, kind of the alt text and where the image is. Here's another heading. You can use list items. The really cool part is we can use some code blocks here. Uh, we can use block quotes. Here's a link. Here's an example of a table. Uh, here's a quick horizontal rule. Um, we can do some other things. We can use some inline code. Um, so I'm going to show you one more, which is a markdown component, but we'll get to that in a second. So I want to go back to our blog post here, and we see we have this title, paragraph, paragraph. We see that nothing's really styled, and, and why is that? 
Well, it's because we're here in this slug and we're giving it this content doc and we're saying, oh, just display whatever you get from the markdown file. But we can't really say like class, you know, heading one is a font, you know, a text 3XL, whatever it is, right? Like we can't do that here. And this is where Tailwind CSS's typography plugin really comes into play. So we can see the typography plugin, uh, beautiful typography defaults for HTML you don't control. So this is HTML that would come from like a CMS or in our case, Markdown that is getting turned into HTML. Uh, what we can do is just add the pros class to whatever we want to um, style and we'll get some really nice defaults out of the box. So the first thing we need to do is uh, go ahead and declare or add that dependency. So I'll say npm install dash d tailwind CSS typography. Now here's where this gets fun. We need to add this plugin to our tailwind.config.js. Now if you look in our project, we don't have one of those and that's because we use the um, Tailwind CSS module from Nuxt, and that does a lot of that for us. Let's go back to that module, Tailwind CSS, and look at the documentation here. Um, so we did all of this. There's some more information. Um, what about the... And you'll find some information on how to customize Tailwind after you uh, get out of the defaults. You know, one of those things that you need to add to your project is going to be the tailwind.config.js. Now again, you can change that configuration to look at a different file, but I'm just going to use the defaults. So we're going to paste in uh, kind of the default here. I don't need to override anything else, but this plugin, I'm going to require the typography plugin. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and rerun my application. Go back here, still nothing has changed, but if we go back over to content doc and we say class is equal to pros and save that, you'll see now we're getting some nice styles out of the box. So this is really great. We um, don't have to individually style headings and paragraphs and lists. We're gonna get this out of the box. Now one thing I notice is this um, code block look, is looking a little bit generic. And so how can we go ahead and correct that? Well, if we go into our Nuxt config, I said that we can kind of customize content. One of the things that we can customize in there is the highlight. So we can say for our highlight, I want to use a specific theme. I happen to love the Nord theme. There's a few others I love. And then I can also say I need to preload uh, some of the available languages. So I might want TypeScript, JavaScript, CSS, uh, Java, JSON, Bash, and Vue. Uh, you can kind of, whatever you're blogging about, this will obviously change for you. But with that in place, now I have a theme for my syntax highlighters. And if I refresh this, you can see these are a little bit changed. I'm actually getting some colors out of this. So, so far so good. Now I want to talk about markdown components. So let's say that here in my markdown file, I want to use a reusable component. I want to create this highlight component where I can use it over and over again because it's going to be, I don't want to have to re like do the same thing over and over in different markdown files. So let's start with, under components, there's a special directory for content. So again, this is by configuration. So I would say, under components, new folder, content. And now anything in the content folder is what we can go ahead and use inside of our markdown components. So I'm going to create a new file. Let's call this callout. I don't know why I'm having trouble with this. Let's see, call out dot view. And to save some time, we are going to copy and paste some code into here. This is just going to take in a prop. It's going to take in a string. Uh, the default is call out. Uh, this is called title. And it's going to display that title here. So it's going to display that title. And then whatever is in the slot is going to be displayed as the text. So this is a way of styling this up, giving us a nice uh, call out 
And let's go ahead and save that. And now in our Hello World um, blog post here, our Hello World um, markdown file, we can use that component. And the syntax for this is the double the colon three times, and then we could say call out. If we didn't want to display a title, then we could just move down to the next line. But in this case, I want to pass a title, and I want to say title. Oops, title is equal to hello world caught. And now, oops, on the next line is where my content is. This is a quick tip about. Markdown, and then we're going to end it with three colons. So now if we save, this is calling that component. It's a markdown component sy syntax. And if we go ahead and refresh this, maybe we didn't. Let's try an npm run dev. So that gets picked up. And now we see we have this callout component that we can reuse throughout our different uh, markdown files.